Hello everyone, and sorry about the awkwardness. I just had a brief form of motivation from one of my staff members at the residency that I reside in, and um, he told me that it's still a decent amount of time for me to uh, introduce my creations to you. Um, and he also told me that it doesn't have to matter that much when it comes to the time limit, as long as it's satisfactory to you guys. Okay, so I'm going to start with the five main heroes of my Leviathan universe. The four main chunks of Marvel is Avengers, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and X-Men. And in a similar aspect, I'm going to do the five main heroes. Um, this here is Madame Shear, which is an interesting character, the very first anything I've made. And then is Denstrini. Then it's Penelope Ingrid Myers, or easily known as Pym. This here is a character known as Colossa, size comparison. This here is Kygericus, also size comparison. I'm going to explain to you all of the general data for these characters, since I've been developing these since the June of after me completing my sophomore year of high school, so I had plenty of time. So, Madam Shear. Her real name is Dr. Kimberly Elinda Blader. When she was a child, she loved watching military movies instead of classic children cartoons. And by adulthood, she made a company called Blader Tech Industry, which makes futuristic weapons to be used in future battles. And after... um a bad commotion with some gangsters. She ended up, like, sur barely surviving an explosion and had her arms amputated from the elbow down. And her main computer system, Maya, which is her equivalent of Jarvis, saved her life by giving her these weaponized hands composed of these jointed blades in the place of fingers and thumbs. And after getting proper martial arts training, she uh, got payback on the very criminals that left her in that morbid state. She successfully took them all out because, you know, she was too fast for them to catch up to. And, of course, the, the deadliness of her bladed fingers. And, um, basically, she was hailed as a hero and ever since then gained the nickname Madame Shear, the Bladed Genius. And she's just the first character in this long line. Denstrini. Real name, biological name to Etalus. Her real name is uh, Deborah Trevers, but goes by Debbie. She's the biological granddaughter of Satana, who is the founder and ruler of Tartarus, the underworld. Her biological mother had a bit of an issue with her husband, which already had a family with a different woman, and due to the debates, he left her, and her mother left her in the care of Dr. Trevor's. Yeah, a part of a, a little-known organization, little-known at the time, known as the Paranormal Defense, and... She was named Deborah Trevers, but goes by Debbie. And by adulthood, she's basically like the current CEO of Paranormal Defense, which deals with paranormal threats and also otherworldly threats, such as like alien attacks, for example. But a lot of times involving paranormal stuff and such. Not to be confused with Anun Unrama or Hellboy, because I prefer to give the creators of the things that inspire me a decent thumbs up, saying that they had a great job on their work to the point that my creations have been manifested through that spark of inspiration. A fine congrats for sure on all of their behalf. Penelope Ingrid Myers, or Pym, 
She is a Lunarian from the planet Luna. Her kind is humanoid, but they are 15 feet tall, three hearts beating in their chest, amplified torsos, if that's the right way to put it, you know, and also cosmic intelligence. At the time, Kim was the sole survivor of her home planet being obliterated from an exploding star, I believe. And she ended up becoming an adult. She was Einstein level at by like six or seven years old. And by an adult, she basically made a home in the Fortress of Heroism, which is located somewhere in the Sahara Desert. And she became a champion hero, defending the planet and all forms of innocence from cosmic threats and such even dealing with her evil counterpart, Dark Pym. You know? If you get to know them more, you could actually relate to them and be fine with it. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to keep things symmetrical. Colossa. Her real name is Shannon Murray. She is the granddaughter of Goddess, who created the Cosmos, and... And, um, her mother left her when she was newly born, and that gave her, like, clinical depression and a fear of everything, until the native equivalent of S.H.I.E.L.D., known as the Blue Man Clan, like, injected her with specialized serums, which eventually turned her into an anointed deity, with mass alteration capabilities, intense strength and martial arts, able to break the fourth wall, and also be able to shoot nuclear beams from her hands and such. The fact that she's the granddaughter of Goddess, who is the founder and leader of the Alpha Gods. You know, she has some power, but of course every Achilles has its heel. She's powerful, but she can be rivaled and even defeated by more intense cosmic threats. In Kaijericus, Kiko Marikami, she is the daughter of an American woman and an Oriental father. Eventually, she learned that her mother died in a severe collision course with her car, and while working at the nuclear plant, she ended up falling in the vat. A few months later, she mutated into this kaiju creature. Eventually, she gained back her humanity and her memories of before she became like this. She became the queen of the mutants, like the Leviathan Universe equivalent of Gojira. And she's been known to deal with kaiju-based threats. Like the, uh, 20 like, say, the 50-mile-long mermaid deity known as the Alpha Mer, along with, like, say, a an oriental dragon threat known as Yamata no Oroche, which means big snake of eight branches. That devastating. And, um, yeah, there's plenty of stuff. I don't want to get too carried away. And yet, at the same time, there's so much data that you guys are probably more willing to examine. Madame Shear, as you could probably guess, was inspired from Edward Scissorhands. But that doesn't make her a ripoff or anything. I'm just doing a thumbs up for Timothy. You know, she's just trying to make weapons for the United States to use in future battles. Dentrini is just protecting all innocents from paranormal threats and otherworldly threats. Pym, of course, dealing with cosmic threats. Colossa, dealing with like, cosmic deities and such that are able to rival even against her power level and such. And, of course, Kaijericus dealing with kaiju-based threats. So they all have their destinies, and they all have their reasons to be. Sorry about this list, I'm just trying to refresh some things to make things uh, in proper symmetry, you know? Um, I'm just trying my best to make sure that these creations 
have more potency to the public's perspective than just illustrations on paper. Can you imagine watching a cinematic storyline involving Madame Shear, for example? That would leave me with tears of joy, if you know what I'm saying. It would feel so much of a grand accomplishment if I have my work immortalized, which you guys already know about by now. I've been examining my Leviathan universe and updating it for over seven years approximately, and I've gained like over 14,000 creations on my Microsoft Excel spreadsheet system, which I call my Levitz Paradigm. Sorry I can't be able to show you my Levitz Paradigm through the footage because you know how it is. It's a bit bulky, you know, with the uh, trying to balance it all out and such. Of course, if you have any more questions about my Leviathan universe and more questions about each of the individuals, I don't know every single piece of my Leviathan universe, but that doesn't bother me because I love trekking out more just to examine what more my creations have to offer, you know, even if I have to take a while to do so, if that's the right way to put it. It's, it's actually quite potent, and I just hope that you guys are impressed with my five main hero characters, all with their own affiliates and their own, you know, dimensions and monster species and villains, types of events, and planets, and bases, and all things that might leave you speechless if you get to know enough data about it, you know? I just hope you guys would be impressed to the point where you would like to make more comments down below, and if it's enough motivation, you could even subscribe if you want. I'm not trying... You could subscribe. It's your choice on whether or not you would like to subscribe for this mini fundraiser thing that I stated in my first footage. At least it's quite potent, and I just hope you guys are impressed and willing to learn more. And thank you all in advance, and hopefully the next podcast will have some more in-depth stuff of things to explain from my Leviathan universe and such. And hopefully it would be working out for all you guys. Don't mean to put in too much of a hype, because it might it might be a bit disorienti disorienting, if you know what I mean, when it comes to things being so amped up. You know, we just have to wait and see. We just can only hope. And until then, it's we just have to go with it, you know? Thank you all who's watching this footage. Hope you enjoyed learning about my characters, because that's just scratching the first like piece of grass of this entire globe of forest, figuratively speaking. Hope you guys are willing to learn more, and I would be hearing your comments down below and such. Thank you all in advance, and transmission.